Okay, so good morning. This is the uh, uh, 31st lecture and uh, in the previous lecture we have started our discussion on dimensional analysis and in particular we were talking about the Buckingham Pi theorem. Okay, and while I have demonstrated you the formulation of Buckingham Pi, uh, Pi theorem, what we had done is actually we considered that force acting on a body is nothing but function of density of the fluid surrounding it, velocity of the free stream, length scale of the body and mu is nothing but viscosity of the fluid. Okay. <clears throat> so that is what we have done and then uh, we follow the process of Buckingham Pi theorem and by following that process we have come to know that for this type of system we will be having only two dimensional electrodes. Okay. And then we chose our repeating variables and rho v l our nothing but rho v l were our repeating variables. Okay. And after selecting rho v l then we performed the dimensional homogeneity. Okay. And we have come to know that our pi 1 is mu y rho v l and then pi 2 is equal to f divided by rho v square l square. Up to this point we have done in the last class. So all of you are clear with this idea? All of you have come to know? Okay. Now what we will be doing next? Next is, of course, whenever we are non-dimensionalizing, I told you that one parameter we will be considering as nothing but kind of output parameter, which is our parameter of interest. Okay. And other parameters, we can say that these are the relevant parameters on which this output parameter is actually dependent. Okay. So, over here, you can see from the uh, non-dimensional functional formulation that f is my nothing but the parameter which we are looking for and this parameter we are considering as function of some other parameters. Fine. So now once we have done the non-dimensionalization, particularly the non-dimensional parameter which is involving f that we will be considering as nothing but our output parameter. Okay. So basically I can say that my pi 2 is nothing but function of other dimensionless parameters. So other dimensionless parameter I have only pi 1, so function of pi 1. Is this point clear? Basically I want to keep my, I want to keep my f on the left side. That is my goal interest. Okay. Because that is my output parameter. Okay. So pi 2 I have written as nothing but function of pi 2. Okay. Now, pi 2 which is f divided by rho v square l square that has become some function of mu by rho v l and mu by rho v l is an important parameter which we call nothing but our Reynolds number. Okay, So I can simply say that f by f by rho v square l square will be function of Reynolds. So, this is my formulation. Fine. So, it means that if you vary Reynolds number, upon variation of the Reynolds number, you can calculate this CF force coefficient. So, while I will be performing the experiments, what I can do, I can vary the Reynolds number for my uh, different experimental conditions and then I can calculate the corresponding value of CF and I can plot variation of CF as function of this is something which I can do actually. So ultimately if you see we were having actually we were having dependence of force on four parameters. Okay. So earlier if I could have done experiments then first I would have plotted f as function of density then f as function of velocity f as function of length and f as function of viscosity. But now after performing this dimensional analysis actually I can simply write that okay CF which is involving the force, dimensionless coefficient of force that is nothing but directly a function of Reynolds number. So if in an experiment I directly control the Reynolds number and I am not very much interested in uh, uh, knowing the values of individual parameters that what is length, what is V and what is uh, density in that case what I can do basically I can uh, simply get a relationship between the dimensionless parameters. So my number of variables have actually this point here. 
Now let's take one more example to demonstrate the Buckingham pie method. So let's consider that I have a beam and the deflection of the beam is function of load acting on the beam. So please consider from the solid mechanics course P we call here not pressure but we call there P as load which is equivalent of force. Okay. So as this example is coming from solid mechanics, I will be using the symbols of solid mechanics. Okay. So that's why this P is nothing but load over here. L is length of the beam and E is modulus of elasticity okay. and I is movement of area, second movement of area. So what I am saying that I have a beam and the deflection of this beam, delta is deflection of the beam. So I think you, you all are studying uh, this solid mechanics course in this semester. So you must be knowing what I am talking over here. Okay. So I am saying that I have a beam and for this particular beam my delta which is deflection is function of load acting on the beam, length of the beam, modulus of elasticity and Final quantity is second moment of area. <coughs> okay. Now, what we will be doing? Please tell me. We are once again going for the Buckingham Pi method. So, what we have to do over here? We have to write what we have to do. Please tell me what we have to do. What is the first step for Buckingham Pi method? Total number of variables. Total number of variables. Okay. N equal to? 5. Delta is also there on the left hand side. So total number of variables are 5. Okay. What is the next thing which I need to do? How to find out number of fundamental dimensions? Okay, so what will be fundamental dimension of delta? L. L. What will be fundamental dimension of P? MLT minus 2, correct. L. E. Same as P. M, L2, L2 why L2? Acceleration. Acceleration is LT minus 2. Okay. Then MLT minus 2 upon L or L square. Force is ml t minus 2 per unit area is L square. So then it will be ml minus 1 t minus 2. Okay. What about I? <coughs> what about I? Please tell me. Square or 4? L. Okay. Okay. So how many fundamental dimensions are involved? Three. So my J is equal to <coughs> three. If J is equal to three, then K has to be less than or equal to J. How to decide whether it will be less than or it will be equal to? How to decide? First, what we can do? First, we can consider say K is equal to J. If I consider k equal to j, how many number of repeating variables I have to choose? 3. Let's consider I have chosen p, l and e as my repeating variable. Okay. Then the very fundamental definition of choosing the repeating variables is that the set of chosen repeating variables should not form 
dimension let's go this. Okay. So if we have chosen these three repeating variables, first we have to check whether these are forming any dimensionless group or not. Okay. So how we can check that? I can consider that that all these three dimensionless variables, let's consider that these are forming some dimensionless group. I have assumed. Okay. So if I consider, then I can write pi 0 equal to function of P, L and E. Then if I have to write, so I can say that my dimensionless group pi 0 which will have dimensions m0, l0, t0 that is nothing but equal to p power a, l power b and e power c. Okay. So, products of powers of individual variables is something which forms the dimensionless group. So that is what I am doing over here. Okay. So P power A, L power B, E power C. So if I do so, what I will be getting, I will be getting M0, L0, T0 is nothing but equal to in place of P, it will be M, L, T minus 2, A, L, B and L4, C. Fine. What are you with this idea? So what I will be getting from here? Sorry? E I have written wrongly. Oh, it is not I, it is E. Yeah. E is ML minus 1 T minus 2. ML minus 1 T minus 2 C. Okay. So what I will be getting from here? A plus C equal to 0. Then what else? A plus B minus C equal to 0. And what about third thing? Minus 2A minus 2C equal to 0, which implies A plus C equal to 0. So first and third has become equal. So simply I can say that A is nothing but equal to minus of C. Okay. So if A is minus of C, then I can write this as minus c plus b minus c equal to 0 and from here I will get b nothing but equal to 2c. Okay. Now if I consider that say c is any arbitrary value 1. So if c is 1 then what will be a and b 2. So it means if I put these powers, these values of A, B, C, then my set of repeating variables will form nothing but a dimensionless group. So my pi 0 will become, pi 0 will become what was A, P power A. So P minus 1, L, 2 and third is E. One. Okay. Is this one here? So in this situation, what is happening? All the repeating variables can only form a dimensionless group when values of A, B, and C are equal to zero. <coughs> if values of A, B, C is other than zero, and then also the set of chosen repeating variables are forming a dimensionless group, it means that now our k has to be less than 3 okay? because the criteria for selecting the repeating variables is that the set of repeating variables should not form any dimensionless groups. But we have found over here in this situation if I consider my k equal to means number of repeating variables equal to the number of fundamental dimensions then what is happening then I am finding that my set of chosen repeating variables are forming a dimensionless group for values of a, b, c other than 0. So it means what if we take a different set of variables? Then also it will form. You can try. Okay. So one case just I have shown you. You can try one more set. Because that is the fundamental idea of Buckingham Pi method that whatever the set of repeating variables we are choosing 
these should not form the dimensionless group but when we are adding one additional variable to the number of repeating variables then it should form a dimensionless group so that is what when we write pi 1 then we write first powers of repeating variables and their product and then we add product of one more variable and then it forms a dimensionless group okay so if repeating variables are themselves forming a themselves forming a dimensionless group then this does not satisfy the fundamental idea of buckingham pie method okay because as per the buckingham pie method the repeating variable should be so chosen that only the addition of one variable can form a dimensionless group okay so in this scenario what we are finding we are finding that our group of uh, when we have selected the three repeating variables which are equal to the number of fundamental dimensions then these three variables are forming a dimensionless group themselves if these are forming themselves then it means it does not satisfy the fundamental criteria of the method okay is this point clear so now what we have to do of course i will be choosing the value of k i have to choose value of k less than j okay so let me choose now k equal to 2 which is less than 3 because j is equal to 3 fine if you choose other three set of parameters there also you will be finding it is forming a dimension we can be confident because the fundamental idea of the method is whenever repeating variables are coupled with one additional variable then only they should form okay so if repeating variables themselves are forming then of course whatever the next three set you will be choosing whenever you will be coupling that with these set of parameters then it will not form that okay yes you can give a try I have just shown you one case, you can give a try by your own. Here also you will be finding that that will also form some dimensions. So this can always be changed. Like uh, if a set of three parameters is uh, dimensionless for some value of x, so for every kind of problem this will be true, like all the set of three parameters. Yes, yes, yes. And other way of checking this is that in place of using the MLT fundamental dimension, you can also choose other method. One is MLT. Second approach is you can choose fundamental dimensions as FLT. Where F is nothing but force. Okay, so force also you can assume as a fundamental dimension. So if you assume force as fundamental dimension, then you will be finding for this set of variables, I will be only getting two fundamental dimensions. So that is another check that so basically out of the two systems whichever is following the minimum that will be satisfying our criteria is this point here though FLT system I have not demonstrated over here but if in place of mass you consider your force as the fundamental dimension and if now you try to write your all the fundamental dimensions for each parameter in terms of FLT for this problem you will be finding you will be having only existence of two fundamental dimensions because your time and mass will be coupled together to form a single force quantity and only L will be consuming your load okay is this point clear so that is the reason that if you write it in FLT system you will be only having force and length as the F and L as the two fundamental dimensions point is clear Yes, in parameter, yes, we can have any set of three parameter. The first criteria is they should not form themselves a dimensionless group. And second criteria is we should always select popular parameters to be our dimensionless parameter. So by giving the popular parameter, for example, if I have option of choosing in between density and surface tension, I should choose this. Because density is having its occurrence in majority of the dimensionless variables. On contrary, if you see surface tension, that will be coming only in very specific set of parameters. For example, Weber number it will be coming, capillary number it will be coming. We mean 
very less number of parameters which are having very specialized situations. So we should select always the popular parameters. On contrary, if you see the group of dimensionless parameters, you will be finding existence of everything very large number. Okay. So if you choose a weird variable to be your repeating variable, then you will be finding that your dimensionless groups also will not be very generic. Some weird dimensionless parameters you will be getting. From where you will find difficult situation in, from which you will find <coughs> difficult situations in making the physical inference case. Okay. So that's why these two are the kind of uh, generic guideline. But of course, you can try multiple parameters and then you see how your outcome is coming and the set of parameters with which you are finding the more generic set of dimensionless group, you can choose that. Okay. And of course, it also comes with experience when for some similar set of problems, you will be doing the number of times dimensional analysis, then it will be immediately clicking to your mind that, okay, you should select this variable. Okay, so now what I have to do, I have to consider only two. So now you can see that when I have to select two repeating variables out of load length, modulus of elasticity and second moment of area, the more popular seems to me load and length. So that's why I will try to choose P and L rather than P and L. Fine. So my K equal to 2. If my K is equal to 2, then how many repeating variables I should have? Only 2. So my two repeating variables are say P and L. P and L are my repeating variables. Then how many number of dimensionless groups I can have? And with P and L, when you are only having two, you can simply try the different combinations of L and P. You will be finding that in load, you are not having, sorry, in length, you have only single parameter, whereas in load, you have mass as well as time also. So any combination of P and L you choose, you cannot cancel out the mass component and the time component. So that's why these two are not common any dimension. Is this one clear? Load and length cannot form a dimensionless group. Because in load you are having existence of mass and time as well as length. And in second parameter length you only have single parameter L. So whatever combination of length you try you will be only able to cancel the L portion of the load. But you cannot cancel M and T. So that's why P and L cannot form a dimensionless group and I need not to explicitly perform the dimensional analysis to check whether these two can become dimensional groups or not. Okay? Is this point clear? Okay, so now what we have to do? How many number of dimensionless groups we will be having? N minus K 5 minus 2. So I will be having Three dimensionless groups. Okay. So let me consider my first dimensionless group. Pi 1 is nothing but equal to P times A, L times B, and then I have to choose any one additional variable. Say my additional variable is delta. Is this one clear? So now what I will be getting? M0, L0, T0 equal to, please tell me. So, 0 equal to, if I take the sum of all powers of m, a is equal to 0. And then, for length, it will be a plus b plus 1. So, from here, b will be equal to minus 1. And from time, what I will be getting? So, a, b, we have calculated. So now my pi 1 will be delta into p power 0, p has gone l power minus 1. So first dimensionless group is delta by l. Fine. 
then what about second dimensionless group mlt minus 2 a l b so these will remain same so if you want to differentiate then you can write for first dimensionless group as a1 b1 okay if you should not get confused here you can select a2 b2 now we have to choose the third parameter with this so what was the third parameter let's consider e fine let's consider over here e so if i consider e then it will be becoming m l0 t0 mlt minus 2 power a2 l b2 and in place of e i will be having l ml minus 1 t minus 2 okay so now tell me what i'll be getting the values of a b c sorry 0 equal to a2 plus 1 so a2 will be minus 1 and if i consider l then a2 plus b2 minus 1 equal to 0 from here what i'll be getting b2 2 okay then third okay we have calculated only two we need to calculate from time also you will be getting the same value for it okay so it means that my pi 2 is nothing but e times a2 what was a2 p p power minus 1 so e by p and b power 2 so e l square by that is my second dimensionless group all are clear with this idea now we have to consider the third dimensionless group pi 3 equal to what p a3 l b3 times i okay so from here what i will be getting m0 l0 t0 equal to ml t minus 2 a3 l b3 and l4 so from here if you calculate then a3 will be equal to 0 a3 plus b3 plus 4 will be equal to 0 which means that b3 equal to Minus four, and out of this, what I will be getting that pi three is equal to i into p power zero l power minus four, so i by l power four. Fine. So it means that now, whenever I have to write the functional form between dimensionless groups, how I can write? On the left hand side, always I have to consider the group which is my parameter of interest. My parameter of interest is deflection. Deflection is coming in pi one, so I can write that pi one is nothing but function of pi two and pi three. So from here I will be getting that delta by l is a function of e l square by p comma. i by l4 now you can if you have already studied the deflection over beams okay you will be able to relate that majority of your fundamental formulas which you are getting there for a deflection these will be having involvement of these two dimensional groups okay you can verify this from your textbooks of solid mechanics also you will be finding majority of the formulas are deflection will be having these two parameters involved okay with same relationship of powers so that is the benefit of dimensional analysis you are having five now only you need to vary these two and then you you can establish their effect on delta by delta fine
If this point here, anyone is having any issue? So Buckingham Pi method is clear to all. Apart from this, one more method is there, Ipson's method. That also one can try, but this is more systematic. But if you want to know, then I can quickly explain Ipson's method also with the help of one example. Okay. So as per Ipson's method, what we can do, I can write say force is equal to function of density, velocity, length and viscosity. Okay. Now I can write the fundamental dimensions over here. So fundamental dimensions of force F L T minus 2. ML minus 3, LT minus 1, L. What will be dimension of mu? Please tell me. I have shown you in the last class. Fundamental dimension for mu. L minus 1 T minus 1. Is it correct? So if we if I have this as the fundamental dimensions, then what I'll do, I'll try to one by one eliminate the dimensions on left hand side. And while I'm eliminating dimension on left hand side, if in any other parameter also that quantity is involved, I will actually divide that particular parameter also with the fundamental dimension. Okay. First, let's consider that I want to eliminate m in left hand side. So if I want to eliminate m in left hand side, I have two options. Either I can divide this dimension of ml minus 3 on the left hand side or I can divide this dimension. So out of these, let me choose a popular one. So popular one, I will choose this this okay so what i will do i will divide this side by density so i i will get new parameter as f by rho and if i am dividing with dimensions of density then what i will be getting over here can you tell me fundamental dimension will be l power 4 and t minus and of course, this rho will become dimensionless. So rho has become dimensionless. So it means it has kind of gone out of this dimensional system. Lt minus 1 was not having any involvement of mass. So of course, here I will not divide with rho. So this parameter is remaining as it is V with dimension Lt minus 1. Then once again, L is also remaining as it is with dimension L. Then here, when I will be dividing this, because my interest is to cancel m. In order to cancel m, I have to keep power of density 1 only. So, m and m will cancel out and it will become L minus 2t minus 1. Is this point clear? Up to this point, is it clear? Now, let me consider that in this new system, I have now L4 T minus 2. Let's consider my interest is to eliminate. Now my interest is to eliminate this power of T. L power plus 2. Yes, it was minus 3, so it is a plus 2. Yes, correct. Now what is my interest? This is my main output parameter. So in this parameter, I am having presence of t power minus 2. So I want to eliminate this t power minus 2. So what I will do, I can have, I am having this value of t minus 1 in parameter velocity. Okay. So if I have to remove this t minus 2, then of course I have to divide this left hand side by nothing but velocity square. So if I divide with velocity square, I will be getting parameter as 
f by rho v square and what will be fundamental dimension velocity square will become l square t minus 2 in the denominator so that will give me only single dimension left l square density was already gone now whenever i am dividing with velocities or velocity is also gone l has remained as it is a left parameter now in this last term mu sorry now this is not mu because mu already i divided in the previous step by density so this is now mu by rho okay so in this last parameter mu by rho you can see now we have dimension of t minus 1 and velocity is also having scale t minus 1 so if my interest is to cancel t minus 1 i can simply divide this parameter mu by rho with velocity okay so if i divide with velocity t minus 1 minus 1 will cancel and i will be left with only dimension of l and new parameter will become mu by rho is this one here my new parameter is mu by rho v now what i can do i have only dimension of left over here l so this is the parameter which is containing dimension l i can divide with this now so if i divide with this i have to cancel l square so of course i need to divide with l square in the left hand side so i will be getting f by rho v square l square these two are already gone if i do l by l then this is also gone and here also i am having l only so i need to divide with l so if i divide with l i will be getting mu parameter as mu by rho so by ipson's method also we are able to get that f by rho v square l square is nothing but function of renolds All are clear with this idea? Is this point clear? So now, what you can do, you can take your uh, this uh, homework exercise, and you can try the second example which I discussed, delta deflection of beam. You can try that example by Ipsons method. So you can consider this as your homework assignment. Okay. Though you have not done anything in last one. any one of you have studied something okay i will try to give you this uh, assignment as well as the practice sheet for this week dimensional analysis and the previous chapter differential <coughs> equations of okay so that i will try to give and uh, uh, also remember that we have this project also so one week before the last date of class i am not forming formal groups i am considering you all have formed your groups by your own okay so this flexibility is up to you and uh, one week before so 25th of november is the last teaching day so means by 18th of november we will have your presentation and report submission i will soon share the format for the report you have to choose by yourself and if you are not finding any topic then come fine okay now let's try to see the fundamental idea of non dimensionalization of governing equations so what we have done till now we have actually selected some group of variables and then we have followed certain procedure to get actually the set of non dimensional parameters so what are the set of dimensionless parameters we have obtained we can also get the similar set of dimensionless parameter if we non dimensionalize our fundamental governing equations okay 
For example, the fundamental governing equations for fluid flow analysis are nothing but the continuity equation and momentum equation. Okay. So if I write continuity and momentum equations for incompressible flow, then I will be getting my continuity equation as del u by del x plus del v by del y plus del w by del z is equal to z. Okay. And my x momentum equation for incompressible flow will be rho into u times del u by del x plus v times del v by, sorry, del u by del y plus w times del u by del z equal to minus del p by del x plus mu times, please tell me, is this equation correct? Is it correct? No response. If I am writing anything wrong, then please correct me. Fine. So, jet direction I am considering parallel to gravity. Okay. So, now these are my fundamental equations. If I consider that I have some reference velocity u, u is some my reference velocity within the flow field. Okay, and if I consider some reference length scale L reference equal to L, then what I can do? All my spatial parameters I can non-dimensionalize with reference to L. And all my parameters which are involving velocity field, these I can non-dimensionalize with reference velocity u. And after doing this non-dimensionalization, I can substitute back these dimens dimensional parameters in my governing equations and I can get set of dimensional equations. Okay. How? Let me show you. If I consider that x star is my dimensionless length which is nothing but equal to x by L. Similarly, y star is dimensionless length which is y by L and z star is dimensionless length which is z by L. Fine. Similarly, I can also consider the components of velocity that u star is equal to small u by capital U, v star is equal to small v by capital U. I have a single reference velocity and w star is equal to small w by capital fine so what i'll be getting out of this out of this i'll be getting x equal to x star into l y equal to y star into l and z equal to z star into l similarly u will be u star into capital u v will be v star into capital U and W will be W star into capital fine. So then ultimately what I will be getting, now I can substitute the values of x, y, z and u, v, w in my main governing equation. So if I substitute, then what is my continuity equation? Del u by del x, continuity equation is del u by del x. In place of u, I can write u star times capital U and in place of x, I can write x star times L plus del v star times capital U upon del y star into L. 
प्लस डेल डब्ल्यू स्टार इंटू कैपिटल यू अपॉन डेल जेड स्टार इंटू एल इक्वल टू जीरो एंड वी नो दैट दिस रेफरेंस वेलोसिटी एंड रेफरेंस लेंथ स्केल आर कॉन्स्टेंट दीज आर नथिंग बट कॉन्स्टेंट पैरामीटर्स सो वट आई कैन डू आई कैन टेक आउट दिस कॉमन सो यू बाई एल विल बिकम डेल यू स्टार बाई डेल एक्स स्टार प्लस डेल वी स्टार बाई डेल वाई स्टार प्लस डेल डब्ल्यू स्टार बाई डेल जेड स्टार इक्वल टू जीरो एंड इफ आई टेक यू बाई एल टू द राइट हैंड साइड माई इक्वेशन विल बिकम डेल डॉट वी स्टार इक्वल टू जीरो वेयर वी स्टार इज नथिंग बट यू स्टार आई कैप प्लस वी स्टार जे कैप प्लस डब्ल्यू स्टार के कैप सो कंप्लीट कंटिन्यूटी इक्वेशन इज नाउ हैज ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू नथिंग बट dimensionless form so all the parameters are purely in the dimensionless form okay is this point clear now if same thing i want to do for x momentum equation please tell me how i can do it in x momentum equation i have rho on the left hand side and then i have u times del u by del x u means u star into capital u and in place of del u by del x i can simply write u by l times del u star by del x star is this one clear plus v star into u square by l del u star by del y star plus w star into u square by l del w star sorry del u star by del z star okay minus of del p by del x so here i will be getting 1 by l times del x star okay is this point clear plus mu times now i have del square u by del x square so from the top i will be getting only single parameter but from del x square i will be getting l square so mu into u by L square times, and this I will be getting Laplacian of Laplacian star square of V star. Is this point clear? Laplacian star square of V star. We are Laplacian star parameter is nothing but del by del x star i cap plus del by del y star j cap plus del by del z star. so from here now what you can do you have this u square by l constant in the left hand side u square by l as the constant so you can take it to other side so you will be getting u star times del u star by del x star plus v star times del u star by del y star plus w star times del u star by del z star equal to Minus one by l into l by u square l by rho u square. Okay, so this minus one by l into l I will be writing and del by del x star of p divided by rho u square. So whatever rho u square has come from the left hand side, that I have directly divided with the p. Is this point clear? and then i will be having plus mu u by l square was here and one l upon l upon rho u square has come from left hand side okay l upon rho u square has come from the left hand side that has become del star square into v star sorry not v star u star and ultimately i will be getting u star into del u star by del x star plus v star into del u star by del y star plus w star into del u star by del z star equal to minus of del p star by del x star 
where p star is nothing but equal to p by rho u square. Rho u square is having dimensions equal to that of pressure. So dimensionless pressure has become p by rho u square and plus this l, l will cancel, u, u will cancel. So it has become mu divided by rho u l times del star square into u star, not mu, this is mu star. So this has become nothing but dimensionless, dimensionless form of x momentum equation. So in this x momentum equ equation you can see we have got three dimensionless parameters. P by rho u square is called as Euler number. This dimensionless parameter is called as Euler number and mu by rho v l is called as Reynolds number. Okay. In y momentum equation also I will be having the same set of parameters but whenever I will be going to z momentum equation then I am having one additional term involving g. So when that g will be coming into picture then I will be getting one more additional dimensionless parameter. Okay. So the idea over here is to show you that I will continue this further in the next class but the idea to so you is that whatever we are doing from dimensional analysis same can also be driven from the fundamental governing equations if we choose correct set of length and time scale. Is this point clear? And whatever these final equations we are getting these have become nothing but purely in the dimensionless form. So now despite of doing the thousands of numerical simulation if you have to solve these uh, uh, these Navier-Stokes equations by computational way, you can solve these dimensionless form of Navier-Stokes equations for given values of Reynolds number and Euler number or so, any other dimensionless parameter that will be reducing your requirement of computational power. Fine. So we will stop now and then we will continue from this point in the next class.